you know, I always say like whatever like a character gets killed or show ends, it ain't mine. They can do it. That's their shit. Right. You're able to separate and keep it. It ain't mine. Yeah. I was raised with a quote that's tattooed on my arm: "Build your own generator." So when they turn off the power, you still have light. That's interesting that you you tied in um, what happened on the set of New York Undercover. Is that why it ended? That you guys weren't? No, the show that? ended because, I mean, and I can't tell you why, who and why yeah. Fox. But what I do know is that at that time, you needed 75 episodes minimum to syndicate. Mm-hmm. And we got to 89. So um, there, there was a lack of love for the show, clearly, because there was still an audience for it. Right. And so, um, you know, I always say like whenever like a character gets killed or show ends, it ain't mine. They can do it. That's their shit. Right. You're able to separate and keep it. It ain't mine. Yeah. I was raised with a quote that's tattooed on my arm. Build your own generator. So when they turn off the power, you still have lights. Yeah. So this this is the first time I'm hearing about you guys walking off the set. Was this like widely known or? We were like, this, we had no hot food truck. Okay. There was no catering truck. There was no security. There was no, um, there was just a lack of respect and, and decency. The, the trailers, the, like there was a dude who worked in wardrobe who quit, found a food truck, outfitted it to be appropriate for set. And that's how we got a hot food truck. Because the feeling was, oh, we'll take care of you and Michael, but the rest of the crew got to fend for themselves. So this was a show with a black and Latino star. The first time in the history of television, you had a black and Latino in a dramatic series that was ever renewed past the first season. So we were not given the resources, right? We didn't even shoot on 35 millimeter film at the time before digital. We shot a 16, super 16. Yeah. So from the stock of film, to how we were treated, we weren't given the same resources, the same love. Now, Fox at the time wasn't even a full network. You had to have 13, 13 right. hours of original programming at the time to be considered an original uh, uh, a network. We had nine. And so um, there were a lot of things that we were not afforded, yeah. the least of which was pay. Yeah. And so at that time, the Friends cast was was also protesting pay, pay. Mm-hmm. And so the timing was such where they tried to, like, literally, there was a news report, I think it was like Entertainment Tonight, where they took our pictures to Laguna Beach, California, our headshots, and walked up to all white people like, Yo, do you know who these people are? Almost like a, a mugshot kind of vibe mm-hmm. to suggest how dare you protest be happy for what you have stay in your place because these people don't know who you are right. those friends kids they know who they are and they're gonna right. get i guess they were going for like seventy five thousand episodes episode at the time did you guys like call each other to say yo we need to make this move yeah, yeah we we did we had a photo shoot the day before and we were starting the first season first day of season three and we did the photo shoot and we said we're not gonna show up tomorrow and we just didn't pull up and the crew's there. The idea was don't just... ever fuck, don't ever ever do that shit. If you're an actor and you want to protest, do not walk off on the show. I was too naive at the time, right? I come from a background of community activism, and you know, at that time, I'm 26 years old. So from 16 to 26, I'm doing community work. I'm teaching right. young people to protest in the streets and stand up for human rights and all that shit. You, you that ain't the way to do it in Hollywood, but we didn't know that. Yeah. Right. And so they immediately vilified us. They tried to like fire us and get other people. But you weren't trying to quit. You were just trying we to make weren't a... trying to quit. We were just like, can I have bro? Pre gentrified Harlem in the nineties. Crackheads, dope fiends. They see cameras, they see trucks, they see the people they see on TV. They rushing you. To get out of my trailer to get to set was a problem. How I got security on set is that Anthony Mason. And Charles Oakley, when they were at the, playing for the Knicks, God bless the dead, Anthony Mason, they were guest stars on the show. Mace was like 6'8", 240, whatever the hell he was. And so the security guys come over and go, hey, we see how y'all are getting treated. So they told us to act like we're here for y'all, mm-hmm. but we're really here for these guys. I called my agent and I was like, listen, a crackhead just tried to attack me 
or set. I'm not going to set unless I got security. That's how I got security on New York Undercover. I had a lie and say a crackhead attacked me. So in all, you said uh, you just advised like upcoming actors to not do that. Is there a regret that you did that? Absolutely, because I think that you got to understand the universe you're in and each universe is different. That's the wise words of Dawn Steele. Again, you know, um, all love and respect to Dawn who passed. Dawn was a executive producer of Cool Runnings. And she was also the first woman to run a studio. She ran Columbia Pictures and she said to me early in my career, Malik, you got to understand your place in universe and every universe is different. And I come to the planet. You asked earlier about purpose. Mm -hmm. It's always been service above self for me. And so the challenge in Hollywood is people see you on screen and they automatically subscribe to you of value mm -hmm. and say, I see you on screen. That makes you a celebrity. That means you think you are blah, 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 because so that's what celebrities do. Can't trust you. You're this, you're that. They have all these kind of projections onto you. I never came into the space like that. I came into the space like I'm still that dude working at 13 high schools, working in these prisons, working with these young people, working to improve the light, you know, a lot of young people. I leave here and go to a meet with a principal in Queens about what the work that I'm doing in real estate development and education and teaching our young people about the built environment. That work has never stopped. And then I leave there and go shoot on the equalizer. Yeah. Right. So my whole career, that's what it's been. It's still been service. Yeah. Do you feel like fortunate to know that you're still able to work in the in the business over these years? Like is there a level Do I of like I feel fortunate that I'm still able to work in the business. Yeah. The short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. The shorter answer would be build your own generator so when they turn off the power, you still have lights. Fair. So the fortune to be able to work in the business, you're in the business. Mm -hmm. You created a space for yourself. Mm -hmm. So the fortune is in the knowledge that you can create your own space. Mm -hmm. Not that you're waiting on someone to give you a job exactly. to create space for you. So the challenge is if people, again, see you on camera, they think that's the only thing you do. Mm -hmm. like, if I don't see you, uh, no. Every single day. Eight days a week, 30 hours a day is what I work. <laughs>